Sometimes you can't finish strong. Sometimes you just need to finish. Mm. Hey, it's me, it's D. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. And if you are, my channel is about adulting, lifestyle, all of that jazz as I am trying to figure out what in the world I'm doing with my life. But since we're in quarantine, I can't do that now anyway, and so there will be no adulting adventures for the most part. There'll be a couple. But because of that, I just want to take the next couple of weeks to actually reflect on my time in college. And so, through the su throughout the summer, Every Thursday, I am going to be coming to you all with a video about some aspect of my college experience. And yes, I do realize that this video is not going up on a Thursday. And you know what? I don't need that kind of negativity in my life, so goodbye. Thank you. But for y'all who don't care that this is not a Thursday right now, today we're going to talk about a couple of the things that I learned my senior year. And boy, was it a rough one. So this first one, I honestly didn't even know it was going to be a lesson until I posted on my story just a thing because I was really frustrated while I was in the middle of finals and then my friend Raven, she has a YouTube channel if you want to check it out, right here or down below, you know, whatever, the deal. Um, but yeah, so that is actually <laughs> to stop overthinking before you finish executing. And in the context that I, oh my god, I'm swinging my eye. In the context that I posted that was that I had spent literally like two or three hours on the exact same problem. And it is all because I stopped in the middle of it. It was a math problem for a colloidal science class. It was engineering elective. We don't need to get into details, but basically it was math, right? And so I'm in the middle of the equation and I'm like, this is not right. This, there's no way in the world this can be right. This is nowhere near the actual solution. Note, this is always a mistake, especially if you're dealing with any sort of exponent. And yes, the square root is also technically considered an exponent in my head. And just don't do it, okay? People just, just don't. Just keep going until you finish the math problem because you're not going to actually know if you're anywhere near what you need to be until you finish it. And I realize that this can actually be applied to a lot of different parts of my life because I have anxiety and because of that anxiety, I get really, really nervous and I want everything to kind of be perfect. And when it's not, I get <gasps> tense. And because of that, it's really, really, really difficult for me to just keep marching through and just keep going when I am trying to execute something. And that can be cooking, a relationship, cleaning up my room. Y'all, I hate cleaning up my room because it always gets dirtier before it's done. And I'm just like, how did this happen? Because we're not going to get into the because, okay? Okay, we're just not going to do that. But I just realized that that is something that I do so often, especially when it comes to my homework and like challenging like analytical problems, which I'm going to have to get used to because I'm trying to do the maths and the engineering junks. But just when she said that she actually learned something from that and then she went and reposted it on her story, that was actually kind of cool. And I was like, wow, okay, maybe I need to think about this a little bit more. And so... I'm happy to say that that was the first lesson that I thought of for this video because honestly, y'all, I'm still learning that one. I'm like, I'm still learning that one. So actually, maybe a better, I'm still learning all of these actually. I think we all are. So maybe a better, better name for this video would be things that I'm still learning after discovering them senior year. So here are my discoveries from senior year. So, number two is a little different because there was a very long point 
long stretch of my life, I would say, let's call it high school. Yeah, high school was the long stretch of my life where um, I, okay, a little bit into, into freshman year, but I got better by like the second half of freshman year. But let's just say through high school through freshman year, I had a bit of a superiority complex. And it wasn't like super, super bad, but it was there. And I'm glad that I've become more self-aware. But because of that, there were a lot of things about the world that I just did not understand. And a lot of them dealt with people and why people do the things that they do. And I'm still very fascinated by that, probably because I was really bad at it before. But the thing that I, <laughs> realized this year is why some people will get almost to the finish line and to the finish line I mean graduation and drop out like within a year of being able to graduate and just dropping out I'm not talking about the people who decided they had like some amazing idea that they needed to go pursue or like a dream that they needed to get to. I'm talking about the people who literally just decided they could not take the rest of that year and they needed to stop. As of November of last year, I completely understand where they're coming from because y'all, I was in such a low point of my life. Like that has honestly been one of the lowest that I have ever been at. My depression and anxiety were at an all-time high. My grades were at an all-time low. I'm at an all-time low, 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 And because of that, I literally was going through it. I was putting in what I thought was my best for the time because I don't want to go into too many details right now because that's not what this is about. And yeah, so God, okay. I just was in a really low part of my life and very kind of dark. And obviously I'm making light of it now because I make jokes about everything. I am not a serious person at all. And making jokes about it makes it easier to deal with. And honestly, I can look back on it and not necessarily laugh, but not be completely upset about it now. I just want to say that I completely understand. I feel where they are coming from. However, my mother literally asked me this today. She, she was like, do you remember when you called me and you were ready to quit? And I was like, was that last year? I have no idea. I literally forgot the day and everything. But yeah, I broke my favorite wine glass that day. And my mother told me that I needed to grow the fuck up, basically. And to go figure out how I could make it work. Because as one of my professors told me, this semester because he also had me last semester when he saw all of that going on was that sometimes you can't finish strong sometimes you just need to finish and for anyone who may be feeling like they're in that place that i was in right now and that they just want to give up when they're so close like literally like you can see the finish line. like there's not even a hill to go over like it's a straight shot there just know that like you don't have to finish strong you just have to finish because finishing on its own is such a huge accomplishment and that is why I am not pressed that I don't have any Latin honors or whatever I graduated and on top of that I graduated with above a 3.0 which is great because the girl was struggling which is why last semester really pissed me off and yeah so I guess the lesson for anyone who doesn't understand where I'm coming from for that is don't judge people. Don't judge a situation that you ain't been in. Okay? Okay. Next one. I really, really like this one. And <laughs> because of that, I actually want to make a separate video on this specific topic. And that is 
while there are things that I wish I could change, I don't regret them and I'm not going to dwell on them. What I mean by this is that there were so many different things that went on in my college experience and those just changing like little ones could have changed like who I hung out with, what I got to do, the activities that I was involved in. And while definitely changing some of those would have been better for my mental health in ways and other aspects, I don't think that I would change any of them, like at all. And that's because all of those little things that I did and didn't do made me who I am now. And more than that, I've learned this because I have so many family members who dwell on what they wish they could have done or what they should have done or what they could have done and all of these things. And it's just not healthy. Like you just have to let it go. Like it's done, like it's over and you can't go back and you can't change it for anything. And that may be disappointing in a way. And I definitely think that it is because obviously everyone wants the best for themselves but it's not healthy to dwell on things that you can't change and the past is one of them obviously you need to confront your past and deal with it but there is no way that you can actually change it and so just accepting that and being comfortable in that and understanding that everything that happened happened for a reason at least in my opinion and has made you and me into the people that we are is something that i think is super 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 important and that i am happy to be able to take with me okay let's have this next one <laughs> i this one was this one so i did a lot of self-reflection and coming up with these things. So I feel like it might be a bit more nuanced than some of the ones that I've done before. But again, I haven't watched them yet. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> Not yet. One of the things that I've had to come to terms with is that even me, myself, the triple minority, <laughs> wild, has several implicit biases that can sometimes cloud my judgment and it honestly like for a while it was making me feel bad that i would think these things about a person or that i could have such nasty thoughts about people and honestly you can't control the thoughts that you have like they're gonna come and they're gonna go and you just have to choose which ones you actually want to express and so this one was really big for me because it's we should acknowledge that we have implicit biases, but we should not be complicit in them. And what I mean by that is that there are definitely things that are subconsciously and societally ingrained into people's minds. And there's not much that you can do about the fact that they are there. You can work to change your mindset and work on how you meditate and just trying to get yourself in a different mindset. but it's likely that those implicit biases are going to stick with you for a while. And so while you're dealing with them and straightening them out, or you might have them for the rest of your life, it's really important that you learn how to accept them, let them in, you see them, you let them go. You don't have to act on them. You don't have to say them out loud. <laughs> why? Just why? You don't have to say them out loud. You don't have to do any of that. And that was a really big one for me because I, how do I say this? Again, I guess this kind of goes back to me like liking to people watch in a way. So understanding how people work. And part of that is reading comments. And y'all, if you have ever been in the comment section of anything ever, people just, just love to talk for no reason. I mean, clearly there are so many people here on YouTube, so obviously. I'm just like, what possessed you to say that? And the thing is that some of the things they're saying aren't necessarily things that I didn't think before that, but they weren't things that I necessarily felt. And they definitely weren't things that I felt I needed to say. 
And so that was a really big one for me. But this next one is a pretty big one for me because this one's more personal, although not as personal as maybe number two. But that is that I am sick of being the nice person. And what I mean by that is that I am not sick of being nice. I really enjoy being nice. I love taking care of people and helping people and just being someone that people can come to with their problems and issues and just someone they can rely on. What I don't like is people trying to take advantage of me. Now, if you ask my mother, she will say that I am a militant person. And I think that's just because I like to have my way. But I, while I was in college, I held many leadership roles. And so I played around with some different ways of leading and my leadership style. And in that, I felt that there were definitely things that I let go that I shouldn't have let go or that I allowed people who were also in the leadership role with me, who were helping me figure out how to lead these different groups, that I let them tell me like, dim down my emotions. And I mean, I am an emotional person, but I am really good at not being angry. Like it takes a lot to make me angry. But once I'm there, I'm there. <laughs> and so, I felt that there was a lot of things that I let slide that I shouldn't have necessarily handled that way. And it kind of made me feel like a bit of a pushover, which I did not appreciate because in that phase called high school, um, I, on multiple occasions, got people fired for doing stupid shit because I was like, why would you do that? And I just don't appreciate that there were people, men in particular, that felt that because of whatever reason that they should be able to treat me a certain way. And so I've decided that I'm not going to do it anymore. I am not going to treat people like babies because they are not babies. They are adults, unless they're actual babies. And I love actual babies, but if you're just acting like a child and you're an adult, I don't give a fuck anymore. Because I should not have to change the way that I treat you from anyone else in order for you to act right or to get what I want. I just think that's complete bullshit. And after this semester and dealing with these types of men, I'm not going to do it anymore. And that is my conclusion. And that is that on that. But anyway, guys, if you made it to the end of this video, congratulations, you did it. But more than that, I hope that you all found Find. I hope that you all found this video helpful in what some way, shape, or form, and that you can learn from this and hopefully take this into whatever grade or stage of life that you're in, and maybe not make some of the mistakes that I did. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>